I am Adil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am really thankful to all of my subscribers and viewers who have been participating very actively, posting excellent remarks and brilliant questions. Now here are two questions from our students who want to understand about the roots of quadratic functions. Now the number of roots for a quadratic function really depend on analyzing the discriminant and therefore I have combined both the questions in one particular video. We will first talk about the concept and then take up the solution of these questions. The questions are question number one. Determine the value of k for which the function f of x equals to 3x square plus kx plus 4x minus 2 and g of x equals to kx minus 5 intersect at only one point. Question number 2 is determine the value of k for which the graph of f of x equals to 4x square minus 3x plus 2kx plus 1 has two zeros. Right. So as you know for a quadratic function general equation is y equals to ax square plus bx plus c. Now, if I want to find solution, right, so when we say solution, sometimes we say x-intercepts, right, we also refer to this as real roots or zeros. So these are different terms which are being used, right. So, so whenever we want to find a solution, we normally equate y to 0 and we write this as 0 equals to ax square plus bx plus c. And then using the quadratic formula, we know x is equal to minus p plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac over 2a, right? So these are basic steps to solve quadratic equation given in standard form. Now the part here which is within the square root which is b square minus 4ac is a very important part and this is referred to as discriminant. Truly speaking when we are talking about real roots let's be very clear when we are talking about real roots in this case we are very sure that if b square minus 4 is negative, then we do not have any real roots, right? So if b square minus 4ac is less than 0, right? Then the square root of a negative number is not defined in real terms, correct? So we say no real root, right? So we say no real root. However, if b square minus 4ac is equal to 0. In that case, plus minus 0 will only give you one term which is minus b over 2a. So in that case, we get one real root. And clearly the value of that real root will be at x equals to minus b by 2a. Okay? So minus b by 2a, if that is the root, that means there is only one root. And as you can see from here, that means the situation is something like this. On the x-axis, your parabola has a vertex. It is kind of like this or it could be like this. So that is the one real root, right? If the situation is b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, in that case, we will have two real roots, right? So that is to say the term plus and minus, right? So plus and minus will give us those two real roots, right? So one will be minus b plus square root of b square minus 4ac over 2a. And the other one will be minus b minus square root of b square minus 4ac over 2a, right? So those will be two real roots. And when you're sketching the graph, then you may have a parable which may go up like this, right? Crossing at two points. So these two will be your real roots. Or 
you may have a situation where the parabola is going downwards. However, again, there will be two roots. So that is the third case. Right? So, so in these questions, we'll somehow write the two equations in the form of a standard form of a quadratic equation and then figure out b square minus 4 is c to derive at the result. Perfect. In question number 2, we are directly given the equation. However, it is kind of tricky since this term of x is mixed up. Right? Now, let us see how to solve such questions. So, let us take the first question now. It says determine the value of k for which the function 3x square plus 4x minus 2 and k of x minus 5 intersect at only one point. So we are now given a system which includes quadratic and linear. Now whenever you have a quadratic and a linear system, you may have different situations, right? So you may have a parabola, kind of this parabola is opening upwards. So let me just take one which is opening upwards. And then when we are talking about a line, which is kx minus 5, let's say minus 5 is somewhere here, right? So I don't know exactly how it is going to turn out, but we could have a line which is going like this. Now this system has no solution, right? So this has no solution. Since they do not intersect, right? Well, what we are looking for is one point of intersection. That means we have a line which is tangent to it, right? You see that? So we have one solution, one real solution. Correct? Now, we could also have a condition where the line may be, uh, let's say, going like this. So we have two solutions. Those are different situations. What are we looking for? We are looking for only one point of intersection. Do you see that? So we are looking for this particular solution where the line is tangent to the curve. Right? How we can find it? Well, the best way here to use the discriminant is that at this point, both f of x and g of x have the same value since it is common to both, right? Is that clear to you? So we'll equate these equations. So we can write this as 3x squared plus 4x minus 2 should be equal to kx minus 5. Bringing all the terms together, we got 3x squared plus 4x, I'm writing minus kx, and then the constants minus 2 plus 5 equals to 0. Now as you can see, the coefficient of x is 4 minus k, right? 4 minus k. And this term will be plus 3 equals to 0. Now, as we were discussing, this is a standard form. And in this standard form, what is the value of A? Well, the value of A is 3. The value of B, in this case, is 4 minus K. And the value of C is 3. And what are we trying to figure out? We want B squared minus 4AC should be equal to 0 since we want only one point of intersection. Does it make sense to you? So this is the concept, right? Now with that concept, let's move forward. So let's write down what is b square minus 4ac. So b is 4 minus k. So we write 4 minus k whole square minus 4 times a is 3. c is also 3 equals to 0. So we get this kind of an equation. Now b square minus 4ac, we get this equation equals to 0. We could solve it writing this as 4 minus k whole square is equal to taking these terms to the right side, which is 36, right? Now, if I do a square root on both the sides, what do I get? I get 4 minus k as equal to plus minus square root of 36. Is that clear to you? Right? So we get plus minus square root of 36. Let's bring it here. We have 4 minus k as equal to plus minus 6. So that means we have two different solutions, two different values of k for which we could have one point of intersection, right? So we can write this k value as equal to 
taking k to this side 4 minus plus 6 is that clear to you right so that becomes the value of k now that gives you two values and that is equal to k is equals to 4 minus 6 which is minus 2 or k is equals to 4 plus 6 which is equal to 10 so for two different values of k we have one point of intersection so we can say our answer here is k is equal to minus 2 or k is equal to 10 correct well it makes sense since as shown here the line which we are showing is uh, k with a positive slope right so that means k equals to 10 is probably this equation right minus 2 will be a line which will be going downwards is that clear to you right so a line which will have a negative slope may also have a point of tangency kind of like this right so that may be the line with k equals to minus 2 you get the idea right so we could now write that uh, the value of k could be one of these two and clearly from here the g of x could be minus 2x minus 5 or g of x could be plus 10x minus 5 right as you can now see in with the help of a sketch so i hope the whole concept is absolutely clear perfect now let's move forward and see how to do the second question in this question we are already given the quadratic form so we will do what we did later half of this previous question correct so it's similar to what we just did i like you to pause the video now answer this question and then look into my suggestions question number two determine the value of k for which the graph of f of x equals to 4x squared minus 3x plus 2kx plus 1 has two zeros now we are looking for two zeros correct so let's rewrite the equation which is f of x equals to 4x squared minus 3x plus 2kx plus 1 right now what is the coefficient of x let's be very clear about it we could take x common right so let's write plus here we could take x common so if you take x common i could write this as minus 3 plus 2k right times x plus 1 now even better is to write it like 4x square plus 2k minus 3 right times x plus 1 clear so we get our function in this form now that is the standard form of an equation right so from here we can say a is equal to 4 b is equal to 2k minus 3 and c is equal to 1. since we need two zeros we want b square minus 4ac should be greater than 0 that is what we want so b square for us is 2k minus 3 whole square minus 4 times a is 4 c is 1 right so which is 2k minus 3 whole square minus 16 is greater than 0. So you have to solve this inequality to find the solution. Perfect. Now there are different ways of solving this inequality. Some of my students have not really learned how to solve inequalities at this stage and I find that on YouTube many students who are even grade 8 and 9 will be looking into the solution of this question. So I'll provide you with two different methods, right, to solve. So let's say method one. Method one is, if you know how to solve inequalities. Right, that is for those. If you know how to solve inequalities, then uh, you could do like this we have 2k minus 3 equals to 0 bring 16 to the right side right i could have written it like this here let's go one more step <clears throat> which i don't want to really go uh, we'll just keep it here so method one is take 16 to the right side so we say greater than 16 is that clear to you All right then when you do square root then square root of 16 you have to write plus minus so you get plus 4 and minus 4 correct so you have you have something which is squared 
and you want something greater than a number, right? So basically, when you do square root and when you're doing inequalities, it splits into two inequalities, which is we have 2k minus 3 is less than minus 4, or this 2k minus 3 is greater than 4, correct? So these are the two inequalities which that splits into whenever you have greater than sign away going away right now solving this we get 2k is less than minus 3 i mean let me write plus 3 when you bring it here minus 4 here we get 2k is greater than 4 plus 3 so that is 2k is less than um, minus 1 and here we get 2k is greater than 7 or we get k is less than minus half and k is greater than 7 over 2. On a number line, you can always show this inequality in the form. Okay, uh, let me just show it here itself. Let's say this is my number line. So on a number line, we can say that one solution is going left where this is minus half and the other one is going right from 7 by 2. Is that clear to you? Where well, 0 is somewhere here. Is that clear? So 0 is not a part of your solution. Well, you can check that. If I substitute 0 here, I get 3 square, which is 9, and 9 is not greater than 16. So that means the solution is correct. Clear? So that was method number 1, which you could adopt. Now here is method 2. In method 2, we will do as we work with quadratic equations. So what we'll do here is we'll just expand this, correct? We'll just expand this. So when you expand 2k minus 3 whole square, we get 4k square, right? Minus 2ab, 4 times 3 is 12. So minus 12k plus 3 square minus 16 is greater than 0. So we get 4k square minus 12k, 3 square is 9, 9 minus uh, 16 will be 7, right? So, sorry, negative 7, greater than 0. Now, we need to factor this. 7 times 4 is 28, so we'll factor minus 12 as 14 times 2. So, we get 4k square minus 14k plus 2k minus 7, greater than 0. Now, common factor between them is 2k, so we get 2k minus 7, and we already have here 2k minus 7, greater than 0. 2k minus 7 is common, right? And here we get 2k plus 1, greater than 0. Now that gives me two zeros. That gives me two zeros. And since k square coefficient is positive, think like this. We'll have a parabola with these two zeros opening upwards, right? Now in this parabola, one zero is at minus half, right? This is k equals to minus half, and that is k equals to 7 over 2. So this is 7 over 2, and this one is minus half, correct? We want this number to be greater than 0. Clearly, you can see it is greater than 0 on the right side of 7 by 2, right? So it is not including, however, this side. And here it is not including, however, the left side of half. So we get the same solution, correct? So the solution here for k is, let me write down here, that k is less than minus half and k is greater than 7 by 2. Is that clear to you? So using either method, you could actually find the solution, which is right before you. So I hope that helps you to understand the concept. Feel free to write a comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.